Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally Kern with Supreme Isopods. I have a question for you today. Have you ever failed at a challenge? Whether it's running, some kind of a sporting activity, some kind of a test, have you failed? and just felt like I could have done so much better. Have you gone back and re-challenged yourself and retaken that test or re-ran the marathon or gotten back up on that horse and tried again? Well, today I'm gonna to talk about an experience that I had where I completely failed, made a bad decision, got right back up on that horse. Let's talk about these isopods. It was probably about a year and a half ago that I made a purchase, a big purchase. It was uh, Porcelio Boulevard, uh, Porcelio Nicholsi, uh, Porcelio Expansis, and Porcelio Velarde. Hey iSpot fans, it's Wally again. Here I sit doing this editing and I'm realizing that I called these isopods Velarde. Porcelio Velarde, they're Porcelio Valencia, Porcelio Valencia. So go ahead in the comments below and really let me have it. Thanks for your patience. And it was a lot of all of these animals. It was a big, big uh, expense, a lot of money going through the door at that time, especially for me just starting out with isopods. And I thought that I was able to handle that challenge. Well, the problem was that they came in and they were really not good at all. And it was a bad decision in selecting the seller of these animals uh, to bring them into our house. And uh, I talked to the seller and it just was a, a non, a, not a good uh, situation whatsoever. So unfortunately, I lost the Bolivare and I lost the Nichols Eye and I lost quite a few of the expanses. Now we're talking big, big animals here. Big Spanish isopods, not just big, but expensive as well. So that was a pretty tough loss for us. We also lost the Porcelio Volare. And I tell you what, these are very, very difficult animals. And I get a question a lot here at Supreme Isopods. Should I take the venture into the big Spanish isopods? They're difficult. They're right at the top of the difficult meter. As far as I'm concerned, they're one of the more difficult. All of these uh, Spanish, big Spanish isopods are right at the top of the difficulty meter for, for a lot of keepers. So we have a video out and I'll throw the link up right here on a couple of tips to know that you need to do for these giant Spanish isopods. And I've had a lot of people contact me and say that really, really helps. So first of all, watch that video and get some of these tips out of there. So going back to our story, we brought these four different Porcelio giant Spanish in. We were able to keep some of the expanses, some of the Bolivari, and we had babies and we were able to propagate them. The nickel side, we just lost one after another and after another. And again, this is after a significant loss just in the shipping process. The Porcelio Volare, same thing as the Nichols Eye, but they went pretty quick. They were uh, gone within probably about two weeks. Very frustrating, and for many people, they would look at a situation like that and say, I just, I don't want to try it again for a while. Well, I slowly started, and I was fortunate enough, again, for the Bolivari and the Expanses to re-develop uh, their, their colonies, and they're, they're not thriving for me right now, but they're doing pretty well. Um, the Nichols Eye, I still need to get a beautiful, beautiful giant Spanish isopod. And the Velare, I went out about six or seven months ago, I think it was, and got a second group, my second group of these uh, Porcelio Velare to give them a try again, trying to get right back up on that horse. And I'll get the Nichols Eye at some point, hopefully, and we'll try those again. But I wanted to talk about these Velare. Um, if you're concerned about getting into the giant Spanish isopods, the one that I would suggest you start with would be these Porcelio Volare. I don't think they're as difficult. I think that their requirements are a little bit lower than some of these other isopods, these giant Spanish isopods. And I think that this is a good introduction into those that certain type of giant Spanish isopods. If you know anything about these, 
isopods, you know that they require dry and lots of ventilation. That doesn't mean completely dry. If you're going to do anything with these isopods, make sure you have a corner of your enclosure, probably about 25, 20 to 20, about 20% 20 of their enclosure moist with some kind of a moist area with Spanish, uh, with Spanish, with uh, sphagnum moss and carry that not farther than about 20% of the enclosure. Lots of leaves and some kind of, of bark, um, cork bark or natural bark going from the moist area over to the dry area. Your best bet with these isopods is make sure that you start with a really established culture, uh, real established enclosure right from the very beginning. Set up that enclosure maybe a month before you get these isopods. Put springtails in it, take some, some uh, sphagnum moss from another enclosure, make sure there's no isopods in there, and start this new enclosure about a month before you get any new isopods. That's such a great starting point with any of the giant Spanish. So going back to our story, six months ago, about six months ago, I got another group of these Porcelio Volare in, and let's take a look at them. I've got, I have this uh, egg carton as one solution, and I'll see if I can show this on the screen just a bunch of the Volari in here. And we'll get some closer looks of these isopods in just a moment. Here's another egg carton with a couple of, there's some babies. So these guys will stay still for a while, but if you bother them, they'll just, whoops, they'll just take off. So a few leaves, I need some more in here. I'm ready to feed uh, today actually. So I'll throw some more leaves in here. They go through the leaves pretty quickly. Let's put that down. I have my sphagnum moss here. I have my uh, bark from a tree here. I have some decaying wood, some calcium. And again, this enclosure is a little bit, probably a little bit wetter than I would like it to be. But here's the thing with these Porcelio Volare, they do okay with a little bit too much. Whereas maybe with the Bolivari or the Expansus, if you go too moist with these guys, with those guys, you're going to have a problem. Let's take a look at these. And they're just going to town. Nice big size, nice silver isopod with some shades of red. I see a couple of babies floating around in here. Uh, little mankai, lots of springtails in here. Uh, they're bouncing all over the place, but they're doing super well. Good established colony. So again, I lost this group a few years ago through a really bad decision that I made, but I needed to try these again, and I'm really glad that I did. They're really, really taking off here. Getting a good established culture. This is a nice 15, and it's filling up nicely. I'll probably move these to a 27 quart soon and see if they can continue to grow in size. I have some other videos on the giant Spanish isopods that you should probably watch. I'll throw the link up right there and you can get a good feel for how to keep some of these isopods and you'll find out which one i think is the number one king of isopods thanks everybody for watching i really appreciate the support see you next week